Greetings from the village of Hambledon where I am in the midst of cricketing history where in this village um, existed a cricket club or still exists to this day Hambledon Cricket Club um, that um, was in charge of the laws of cricket the custodians of the laws of cricket which the MCC later took over now Hambledon Cricket Club which was based in uh, this ground actually Broad Haypenny Road uh, a cricket club which has its origins around about 1750 uh, and they came up with the initial laws of the game so you may think of things like um, the overarm bowling the, the size of the cricket bats the length of the cricket pitch um, so a lot of the early laws they came up with and the pavilions just on uh, this side here and we'll have a look at that uh, later on but I've got my main man you are you sure with me another cricket fanatic as well and so we're going to give this cricket ground a bit of an investigation and explore this uh, but there is actually a stone monument here that I want to get some uh, footage of that explains some of this history but if you just have a look at around this area it's actually quite scenic open um, rolling countryside so this actual um, monument marks um, the history of uh, this cricket ground it's got written here this stone marks the site of the ground of the Hambledon Cricket Club circa 1750 to 1787 so this ground this uh, monument uh, marks uh, this spot where Hambledon Cricket Club initially uh, played they are they now play um, just down the road actually and I'll uh, uh, go to that ground uh, soon once I've finished um, my uh, journey here but this is where the history of cricket really starts um, it's phenomenal actually that the laws of the game were made in uh, by the committee at the bat and ball pub just there so when we think of um, the rules of cricket nowadays say the pitch length or overarm bowling or the third stump the middle stump so if you think uh, back to 1750 cricket was played with just two stumps the first and the third it was Hambledon Cricket Club that put in them the middle stump um, so the history of the game is associated with this club uh, that, that you know followers of cricket that watch cricket nowadays um, they've come to just uh, expect these rules but this is where those early rules were made and it was the MCC that later on took those rules because cricket in the initial stages in the 1700s was a rural game which is look you look where we are look, this is rural this is countryside uh, the centers of cricket became London uh, towards the later 1700s and uh, so the MCC took over but just looking at this pavilion area the clubhouse you know this this uh, club is history this is cricketing history for those of you who are into your cricket and into the into the um, the early history especially the early history uh, this club is associated with it. another thing that they did another law that changed if you think of the cricket bats that played with nowadays early days were played with uh, a cricket bat that more looked like a hockey stick and so just yeah, walking on top the, of the, the hockey clubhouse stick bat is actually how the fielding position point came to be because you're actually pointing in that direction so that's why they named uh, rather imaginatively that feeling position point There's so yeah point so that's a good one there a good pointless fact there but yeah it's the, you know most people who are into cricket would know that fielding position point so when the fielder was at point it was because the hockey stick was pointing towards that play position so that's where a lot of these um, facts come about and just on top of the uh, the pavilion area you're standing on top actually and uh, I'm not sure if we're allowed here but who cares if someone kicks us out then we'll go out but we're here looking at cricketing history around uh, Hambledon Cricket Club yeah, it's quite phenomenal to think that in that pub over there the bat and ball pub you know the laws of the game uh, the committee initially came up with uh, it's, it's it's interesting it's fascinating um, that you know those of you who watch cricket nowadays or who, who are fans of cricket um, you know should realize that these laws came from somewhere these traditions and you know, um, have come from someplace uh, and it still is a, 
I didn't know about this. Um, I have to thank one of my good friends, actually, Stuart Maddock, who told me about this. And uh, so I'm thankful to him for providing this um, this uh, piece of information to me so that I can come and see this ground for myself. It's not very, um, you know, it doesn't come very often in life where you get to see uh, sporting history uh, when you get to see the roots of a sport uh, no matter what sport you're in be it football rugby cricket hockey uh, basketball whatever if you can get to wherever the roots of your sport are uh, I think it's always um, an interesting journey and uh, even this place you know this is this is this is unique I mean look where this ground is there's farms behind here you know, so they're farming something here. Not quite sure what it is, but there's farms that I imagine playing here in the summer. You know, where you've got this level of greenery uh, and the country, it's rolling countryside as well here. It's not flat. So it is up and down. It's rolling countryside is what, is what it's called. Uh, so I just want to go and have a look at the pitch area as well. See what that's like. Uh, see what the Hambledon pitch is like. So at this ground here, I mean, Hambledon moved from here 1787, but this ground is still being used by uh, Broad Haypenny Brigands. And just having a look at their pitches, and I've actually got an artificial pitch. So um, I'm guessing this is what they use for their games. But I mean, either side of it, normally this pitch is marked out. And because it's not the season yet, they might actually have a grass turf as well. But because we are only in uh, March and uh, ground preparations are not, uh, they might not be done yet so they may have a, a, a grass pitch here but they've got an artificial one T to be fair it's not a bad artificial surface I've seen uh, many if artificial you come, surfaces you come this way, if you come this, way, this does feel like a square you can see that it's slightly higher than the rest of the ground just this area here it does feel like this is a square so they might just prepare some pitches here during the season that might be just a practice pitch or something. So this might be, this, there might be pitches here actually. Maybe um, when we'll go to Hambledon's ground, um, we'll get to see more of the grass pitches because, uh, like I said, Hambledon were here from 1750, uh, like it says on the stone monument, till 1787. Uh, so, you know, Hambledon are still going today. You know, from 1750, that club is still in existence. And often when um, touring teams do come to Hambledon uh, to visit, uh, they make a special point of um, visiting uh, during the season. So you get the likes of Australia, West Indies, New Zealand, India, Pakistan, um, and uh, South Africa, and, um, and you know, the, the test playing nations, when they do come here, they come and visit Hambledon because this is a very historic uh, cricket club and uh, even though they don't play at this ground uh, they have got their newer ground which really when you think about it isn't new 1787 isn't new so that's my next um, that will be my next place uh, on this cricketing journey that i'm in but i'm just trying to think here actually imagine how many cricket balls get lost in this farm you know you can imagine hitting a few sixes and going into this um, farmland here yeah, that'll be quite a... Uh, yeah, I can imagine a few cricket balls getting lost in, uh, in this uh, farm. But it's actually, having said that, just if you have a look, it's quite a slope. It's quite a, quite a slope coming down here. So I'm, part of me thinks why they left this ground might have been the way that the ground's shaped. I mean, even now there's a bit of a slope. So my thinking is maybe 1787, this ground wasn't level. It could have been one slope going downwards, a bit like those familiar with the Lord Slope. Um, the Lord Slope isn't that, isn't as bad as this actually. So it's, it is quite, a, it's got quite a slope to it. You can see it just rolling down here. You can imagine running up, running uphill. Must be, uh, very uh, tiring so I just want to go and have a look at that bat and ball pub actually because uh, that's where the initial laws of the game were formulated um, for those of you who think of the three stumps the three uh, wickets it was Hambledon that put in the middle one because before 
before that time there were only two so the ball would go through the two stumps and you wouldn't be out so they put the third one in the middle stump so that's another thing that they've done another law that they came up with overarm bowling bat sizes a number of laws formulated in this place here the bat and ball pub you know come to think of it that's proper english style actually where do you want to formulate these laws in the pub most decisions actually in england the best decisions are taken in the pub and so it was here the bat and ball pub early committee meetings were held here you've got the ground right opposite in fact now it's a better view actually of the monument from here It says this stone marks the site of the ground of the Hambledon Cricket Club, 1750 to 1787. Once um, Hambledon uh, moved out from uh, uh, Broad Haypenny Down, this became the uh, the ground of Broad Haypenny Brigands Cricket Club, and it's got a sign there: uh, "Welcome to Broad Haypenny Down, home of the Broad Haypenny Brigands Cricket Club and the Broad Haypenny Down Association." So you can see actually on the sign there. Um, on the, uh, the logo you've got the the ball and the two stumps and the bat that more resembles um, a hockey stick and uh, this now even says here welcome to Broad Haypenny Down often referred to as the cradle of cricket so yeah it is the cradle of cricket uh, so you know the initial the early days of the game the history starts here And through the use of teleporting, I've managed to get myself to Hambledon Cricket Club's uh, new uh, cricket ground, which is uh, located just uh, a few miles up from uh, the Broad Haypenny Down Road. And it's because it's off season. There's um, this ground is actually the clubhouse is actually closed, uh, but I can walk. I can walk along here. And uh, they've actually got good facilities, considering that it's a amateur cricket club. It's got a nice uh, pavilion area. And uh, this is where Hambledon Cricket Club moved to uh, in 1787. So from 1750 to 1787, they were in Broad Haypenny Down, which is it's just a few miles in that direction. Uh, and then uh, they came along to this ground here, uh, which. Having said that, it's got quite a, a few slopes here as well. It's not a level ground. Um, there's quite a few areas where the ground slopes. And even towards the pavilion end, it's, uh, there's a section that's sloping. But let's have a look at their pitch area. And they've actually got uh, an artificial wicket. But I can see here, actually, they've got... Uh, a square square marked out as well so you could probably see it. there's poles here actually and you can see the ground where so that's one one pitch is here and then they've got you can see the the worn ground here so another pitch is here and they've got another one here so they've got about six or seven pitches so this is the actual square where you can see uh, poles here and during the winter this probably is cordoned off so you've got the poles here one there that goes all the way down to the other end so all of these are pitches and so this uh, so, so I think maybe uh, Broad Haypenny Brigands they use the artificial uh, pitch whereas um, Hambledon play on the proper grass pitches but they've also got an artificial wicket as well uh, just go and have a look at that artificial wickets are good because um, if um, the weather's bad, you can still play on artificial pitches. And quite often what happens is, you know, um, for kids training, uh, artificial pitches are used. So they're quite, they're quite handy. And even this one, this one looks quite good, to be honest. Um, it's in quite good condition. I've seen artificial pitches that are ripped up, they're torn. And um, so even this, if you have a look, and you might, might be able to get it on camera or not, it's quite a slope going downwards. So this ground as well, like Broad Haypenny Downs, has a, um, uh, a slope uh, going down the pitch. And maybe, maybe it's uh, interesting to play in, in the summer because 
and you can imagine running uphill, downhill, um, how the game is played. It's, um, yeah, it must be quite interesting here. But like I was saying earlier, with the history of this uh, cricket club, uh, a lot of uh, touring teams do come here and uh, they, uh, they play here, uh, they visit the club uh, and um, it's a, um, especially on the way to Hampshire, so if anyone's, any cricket team is going to the Rose Bowl, uh, Hampshire, it's a, it's a quite a good destination to come. A lot of uh, countries do visit touring teams. So I've just got Ayush here who's uh, calling me over. I'm not sure exactly what he's calling me over for, but I want to find out because he's been signalling to me like an umpire or like a captain or like a bowler uh, t uh, saying for me to do something. Yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, you say you nailed it. I am going to pretend to be a bowler. On this oh, you want to be a bowler? Yeah. So yeah, he wants to be a bowler on this artificial wicket. So let's just see Ayush here. Um, I'll, I'll pretend I am a cameraman, uh, a sports cameraman. So let's just have a look at Ayush and his action. He nearly fell over. He was so fast, he nearly fell over. I'm surprised that he managed to maintain his balance. Um, I think awkward falls over in his action. I think that shame, I think that ball was a wide and uh, or no ball. I'm not quite sure where his feet were. So, but we'll give him the benefit of the doubt. Um, I'm not quite sure because he didn't have a ball in his hand. We don't know what happened. Uh, we'll just have to guess or make fun of him. But Ayush, what do you reckon coming to this place that's associated with history? Yeah, it's pretty historic, isn't it? I mean, I always thought of the MCC as being the custodian of the uh, laws of cricket, but uh, this is where it all began. It's uh, going back in time. It's almost like uh, it's the roots of the game and it's pretty special. So you heard from the man himself. It's uh, not often that you come uh, in, you're into contact with the roots of the game now be be whatever sport you're interested in if you come into the to the the history of it uh, find out where the traditions began um, where the laws of whatever game you're interested in uh, were formulated and uh, just uh, I just noticed actually the sign on their on their clubhouse which is um, it's quite a famous sign now because I've seen it in quite a few places uh, the, to do with the um, the two stumps and the uh, the hockey stick type bats. I um, mean, I mean, if you tell cricket fans, you know, of, of say um, post 2000, uh, that the, the cricket stumps were there were two stumps. The the cricket bat was more like a hockey stick. Um, they'd ask you what drugs you are on. Um, say what you know, what planet are you living on? Um, you know, we've, the cricket bat's always been like this. The stumps have always been three stumps. But no, that's not the case. The case is that at, there was a time when there were two stumps and uh, the bat was more like a hockey stick. You can see it just there in their, in their club logo. So you've got the, the, the red cricket ball in between the two stumps and you've got, the, um, you've got the cricket bats that look like that at one stage. And so that's reality, that's how the game was. And the game has changed to what it is now uh, and so coming into contact with something that still exists because let's be honest a club like this could collapse quite easily um, times are changing interests are changing uh, cricket is very time consuming um, to play and a lot of clubs are going under they're not surviving because the level of interest is not there you've got so many distractions these days the playstations the, the xboxes the iphones you got so much that that distract a child that they're not getting into sport and it's not just cricket it's just participation sport in general you know, the attendance numbers are declining to when when i was a child and it's more it's just the numbers is going down so keeping clubs like this going is difficult but it's credit to Hambledon Cricket Club because I actually do think they've got fantastic facilities here the clubhouse here is uh, is of a good standard especially club quality um, and considering what the history of this club is the actual nets that they've got here the practice nets they're of a high quality as well uh, they've got three actual nets here three practice nets and so the facilities that this club has are of a good standard and they've got a score box just over there 
and they've got a mobile net actually a bit further down so that's probably used on the artificial pitch so the facilities that Hambledon Cricket Club have got and I'm just trying to think in terms of its location what type of catchment it has what type of uh, players does it attract from the surrounding villages and so to be able to still attract the players and still keep going uh, I think it's credit to uh, Hambledon Cricket Club and I hope that it continues for a long time uh, to go and you know its association with the with the uh, the history of the game needs to be promoted a bit more uh, I only knew about it recently um, thanks to my friend my good friend Stuart um, but I didn't know about this it's not something that's the uh, that's widely spoken about you never hear any commentators talking about it uh, when they talk about the history of the game a lot of these commentators long a lot of these specialists these so-called specialists like to talk about the game uh, but no one ever talks about uh, history such as this history such as this which is still alive you know that this ground is still here this club is still running uh, they've been at this this particular ground since 1787 uh, how many sports clubs can even trace their history back to 1787 even though this club can trace their history back to 1750 um, from its old ground so 1750 or 1787 you know, there's not much to choose between them how many of your sports clubs that you are interested in can trace their history back to that time um, not many I don't think there's that many in the world so you know I think the sport of cricket if you're into it or not uh, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter what, whatever sport you're into what is the history of your sport, the team that you follow uh, what is their history, what time do they go back to um, it's, it, these traditions need to be maintained and they need to be kept so that we may enjoy facilities such as these we may c continue to keep learning about the game and so from um, Hambledon Cricket Club uh, on this journey that I've had uh, at Broad Hapenny Down and also at the new Hambledon Cricket Ground, um, it's a goodbye.